Hey everyone, if you weren't aware, this past weekend I did a 24 hour charity live stream, and part of that was trying to speedrun Gloomhaven on insane difficulty with two mercenaries. Just for a bit of fun, didn't really think that we would actually have a competitive time or anything, but thought it would be an interesting challenge to try and take on. First off, I really want to thank everybody who came by the stream or who donated during the fundraiser. We raised over £1,100 for Macmillan cancer support that is a really outstanding number really much more than i thought would have been possible so thank you all so so much for your very kind donations it really goes to show how far this community has grown and how great this community really really is so i'm just really proud right now to be a part of it and you guys really just knocked it out of the park so thank you all so much for just being with me and playing along with me and donating. It was just a lot of fun. So thank you all so much. And I hope we can do more things like this in the future. So let's talk about the run. I did it on insane difficulty with two mercenaries, like I've already said. I chose the Krakar and the Mind Thief as my two characters. No particular reason apart from the fact that Krakar is kind of my thing and Mind Thief is obviously a very strong starting character. I do think retroactively looking back that the Mind Thief was definitely the correct choice as a character to use but the crack heart maybe not so much but it did give me a lot of longevity in scenarios and it was a lot of fun smashing into enemies and doing our usual crack heart things don't take this one too seriously it was definitely just one to get something up on the board but it was a great experience and i'm really glad we did it and perhaps might be something that in the future we can look to try and beat so for spoilers in this video, I do go through all 16 of the required scenarios to reach the end of game status and basically finish the main story arc. There are more than 16 missions within the core quests, if you like, but there is actually only 16 that are required to progress you all the way to the end. So I will be going through each of those missions. If you are worried about story spoilers, then we will be going up against those. However, I do not progress to prosperity level past one at any point. This was really because we didn't get any city events that really helped us out. And it really just didn't benefit us to do so too much. The only reason I could see you would do this is to try and get additional items that unlock later on that might make things a little bit easier. And certainly if you're going for a more optimized run, you might actually consider just doing some prosperity leveling at the beginning of the game, just creating characters, donating, then creating a new character and donating, just doing that infinitely really until you get the prosperity items that you want and then you can create a higher level character as well to go in. But I did level my characters, but I didn't increase the prosperity level. And I also didn't unlock any characters because I also figured that doing any personal quests was most likely just going to take up more time than it was worth. There wasn't really that many personal quests that you could even do by just following those 16 missions anyway. And the characters that they unlocked, I didn't think were particularly strong. You could maybe unlock circles quite easily, but that is not one that you really want going into the final scenario. So I just sort of just didn't bother really doing it. And I sort of actively avoided doing any retirement. I knew that invisibility was going to be incredibly strong. We know it's strong when you're just playing the game normally, but stopping enemies from even playing any kind of animation was obviously going to be very, very good. Completely speeds up the game. I was playing with the speed up function as well in the game. So enemies were taking their turns pretty quick anyway, but it certainly makes things a lot quicker. I also realized that the negative scenario effects that we were going to bump into actually really really annoying so that was a perk that i wanted to go for nice and early so that i didn't have to worry about dealing with it and in particular i think it was scenario four i kind of earmarked that i must have it done by scenario four to either get to level two by then or actually um, get my characters um, their battle goals done to try and get to that point too so that was just another thing that i kind of identified because we were going to be starting to sound i believe in scenario four i really 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 didn't want to do that so it made a lot of sense to kind of go for it. Also, I did kind of work out that Wound was quite strong because a lot of the late game kind of uh, bosses are not immune to Wound. So I thought that would be a pretty nice thing to go for. That didn't really end up panning out. I never had enough gold to enhance Wound on something that was really impactful. And also, really, I didn't want to use the bottom of the mine's weakness for its Wound because the top was just so, so strong and it just kept killing enemies so, so quick that it just didn't really make sense to give up a turn of the mind's weakness to then play it to then have to get it back to then play the top again it just it didn't really feel like it kind of fit the kind of tempo of what we were playing at so but yeah those are sort of sort of basic things that i had in my mind going in but apart from that really i was just taking every scenario as it came okay black barrow scenario one this one was pretty simple really 
I just got the doors open nice and quick and then just tried to funnel the enemies and group them together for a big unstable upheaval to just try and, you know, finish them off nice and quick. I did actually lose some time because I got quite overly excited and I forgot to choose the right cards the first time that I went into the dungeon. So I had to abandon, come out, choose my cards and go back in again. At that point in time, I probably should have just reset the run and started again. But honestly, I wasn't sure how long I was going to need, if I was going to need the whole 24 hours or not. So I just thought, let's just get on with it. I didn't really want to to let that be, you know, it was only a few minutes and, and we're talking about hours here, maybe losing a few minutes to something like that. I didn't want to get too precious really about that. So I just let that one kind of go. The scariest part of this mission is easily the third room with the skeletons and the archers. I mean, the skeletons could just heal and shield and on insane difficulty, them just doing that constantly could actually prove really difficult to finish them off and especially as you're burning cards fairly aggressively when you're playing a speed run so I was burning some things maybe a bit ahead of what I would usually do just to try and kill enemies a little bit quicker take a little bit more of a risky uh, take on things but basically just trying to to get it through so that could be really really bad but also I did end up failing this the first time so it did end up taking me a, a little bit longer like I said I probably could have reset and I probably should have reset but I wasn't too bothered at the time it was all for fun and for charity so we just kind of soldiered on and eventually I did tough it out and I did get through it in just under an hour after that we kind of like settled into the game a little bit more after I got that first scenario done I felt a little bit more confident and certainly um confidence started to build a little bit from that point with the last blend dead you take a your target <laughs> yeah, you guys were willing me on. I appreciate the moral support, though. We did not get off to the smoothest of start that I wanted, but hey, we did it. We got the first one done. So scenario two, Barrow, Lair, and that Bandit Commander boss. This is probably one of the most RNG heavy levels in the entire run, I would say, just because of that boss special with opening the doors or potentially summoning extra skeletons. If the boss opens several doors, then yes, it's going to take longer. I got fairly lucky with my run and I only had two doors opened on me and I managed to dispatch him pretty quick. I was very happy with the way that this scenario went, actually. Felt like we handled it really, really well and I managed to kill him pretty quickly. We made up for lost time from the previous scenario, it felt like a little bit. So this was really, really good. Definitely if you wanted to increase the speed here, if you wanted to get better at this one, you need to kill the boss and... There's quite a lot of RNG here. If they open all four doors, then that's going to take a huge chunk of time. And I don't know whether or not you can make it up. But at least the good news is this is only scenario two in the run. So once you get very quick at running Black Barrow, the first scenario, and you get into this one, it wouldn't be an absolute you know, real pain to be able to reset your run at this point if you really wanted to. Like if you're that concerned, you could just reset your run if you get terrible, terrible RNG. Like he opens a bunch of rooms and you keep drawing your misses when you're attacking him. So... I think it's it's possible, but I was actually really happy with our time on this one. And uh, yeah, this is probably one of the only scenarios that I was actually like really, really happy with. And I think I played pretty well. That's going to hurt a little bit. Okay, so let's try and push you away. Hopefully kill you. Very good. Get you stunned. Lovely. All right, my go. So... Um, hmm. Well, it would make sense to attack you, wouldn't it, really? Scenario 3 is Crypt of the Damned. Another one that has potentially some bad RNG in it. There are a lot of cultists in the second room. And if you open that door and you're a bit unlucky, then maybe you get a couple of extra living bones to have to deal with. It's not going to be the end of the world. You're probably going to be able to dispatch them. It's not going to be too bad. But this is a scenario that's a little bit tight. I would say on stamina because you do have four rooms uh the strategy in this one really is to try and open the room with the earth demon pretty early on and then just kite it to the final room or towards the final room door at least you don't really want to be going into that room to to fight that guy i also ignored chests in pretty much every single scenario unless i knew that there was gold inside this one actually came right down to the wire and we almost lost it and this happened to us a couple of times during the run where i might have pushed my stamina just a little bit too much but we did end up getting the win last turn last turn of the game let's do it Ooh. 
clearly you've disrupted some sort of ritual here on the altar in the back room. The in <laughs> Yeah, boy. A little bit spicy. Runus Crypt was next. This one was an absolute nightmare for me. I just couldn't get any good RNG out of the cultists in the initial opening room. And I must have restarted this one about three times because cultists plus night demons every time i started this scenario either the night demons went really really early and just hit me for an absolute ton of damage which meant i had to burn cars i was on very very low health to begin with or both of the cultists summoned on the first turn and i only had one stun that i could use because of the mind thief i only have perverse edge on the first turn so couldn't stop one of those and then maybe they would summon again on the following turn it was just an absolute nightmare. It was really, really hard for me to get a foothold in this particular scenario. So I lost a ton of time here. And to be honest, I think I played it okay. I think different mercenaries probably would have been better here. Just so that I could go before those night demons. Or maybe try and kill those cultists before they actually get to do their summoning. I think the crag heart is just a little bit too slow. This one really needed action right from turn one. We were also faced with almost an impossible draw as well on the last living bones we were going into the final turn and we needed a times to draw so chat sent in craig to get the job done and this is what happened right here we go right what's the deck look like um Right, so we need to draw plus one and then the times two. It's easy. All right. That's all right. Now it's just the times two. Right? Oh, do like that. Oh! <laughs> yeah, boy. A little bit spicy. I said it couldn't be done. They said it couldn't be done. Wow. wow. So going into the next scenario, we were running so, so hot on this attack modifier deck at this point. Two scenarios back to back winning on the last round. It was very, very clutch. So we we're definitely riding a high at this point. Next up, we have Frozen Hollow, which is the enhancement unlock scenario. So this is the one that once you complete it, you unlock enhancements. And there were a couple of enhancements I was really going towards. I was trying to increase perverse edge bottom the range to make that a little bit easier to hit as i usually like to do with the mind thief i was also looking for plus one on the push on a heaving swing for the crack heart to try and make uh, pushing things into traps a little bit easier or positioning enemies a little bit easier trying to make sure i get that extra damage maybe push them into an obstacle really it was all working towards this wound enhancement too which you know we did kind of end up getting towards the end but i don't think really the value was there in the end but this particular one I actually started it really strongly. I had a good, strong first room. Second room was pretty decent too. There's a lot of retaliate in this particular scenario. You've got wolves in the first room with retaliate one. And then I had the frost demons with sometimes up to retaliate four. And I really, um, I really struggled on the mind thief to be able to consistently do damage in this one. They have a lot of health, a lot of retaliate. And it just didn't really work for me with the mind thief. The mind thief just, yeah, unfortunately couldn't cut things down quick enough then offset that retaliate damage and even fearsome blade with a bit of push to try and keep that away and even uh with the crag heart with the push and with the range damage that the crag heart sort of brings still felt that, that was a bit hard but this was a great scenario for the crag heart just because of the direct damage as well with the living spirits so it definitely wrecked some living spirits but i lost this on my first attempt i lost it pretty late in the scenario as well on the final turn we had one enemy left we had one annoying frost demon left to kill and yeah we came up about a round or maybe two rounds short depending on what we drew i suppose for damage but yeah it was that was very frustrating and obviously losing a scenario like this it's quite a long one so that was a good 40 to 50 minutes lost so we had to restart again yeah this was one that kind of sucked up a lot of time so a lot of improvement to be had here if we could do it first time and i certainly made some mistakes with dealing with the retaliate i think and i also made some mistakes in the final room and how i really managed the doorway and the flow of enemies in this one. Get the last of your oh. You approach the back. You... There's no way I was playing that one again. <laughs> no way I was playing that one again. <laughs> 
Next was Plane of Elemental Power. Now, this one is another one with a lot of retaliate and a lot of tricky demons, elemental demon enemies. The sun demons were really what really did me in on this one. The first attempt I did fail and that sun demon in the second room just would not die. It kept attacking me with advantage and drawing like an absolute god against me, constantly doing you know, plus two or times two. And it really just, yeah, I mean, that damage is not very sustainable at all when you're playing on insane difficulty. So I felt like I got kind of unlucky there, but I mean, they do have advantage and that's what advantage is there for. So, and I just couldn't kill it, kept healing itself as well, kept healing its allies. And I probably just didn't really identify the threat properly on the first time. And I should have just gone after it really, really hard the first time that I saw it. And instead, I decided to kind of let it live, or at least I tried to deal with it in a more normal way, when actually I really, really needed it just to be dead. So I should have burnt some cards. I should have really just aggressively gone for it. But we beat it on the second attempt. But again, another one that we have some improvement and we learn some things. So definitely uh, next time uh, we'll, we'll do better for sure. That's it, I think. Oh, oh we're behind a little bit now. The seventh scenario that we need to play in the chain was Temple of the Elements. And this one is actually one that I've played fairly recently on stream. And I've actually kind of got the strategy down on this one now. So I beat this first time pretty handily. It took me a long time because it's quite a long scenario. Having to run around and get those altars. It can be a little bit tricky, but I've got my ordering down now. I always go to the Wind Demon room first. Then we go to the Frost Demon room. Then we go to the Earth Demon room. Then we go down to the Fire Demon room last. So I was really happy with the way I played this. Just that it was a little bit slow. I think it took us like 35, 36 rounds to clear this scenario. So a long, long time in terms of rounds played. But very methodical. Went through it. It never really looked like we were going to be in trouble. And that we were going to lose the scenario. Maybe on the last couple of turns. Because we we're a little bit low on cards on the Mind Thief. We had plenty of cards on the crack card, so I felt pretty good about that. So yeah, I'm really happy with the way this one went. The only thing I can really say is that we need to just do it quicker and try and figure out a way of just completing it in less rounds. But I was very happy with the way that I played this and the method that I went about for trying to, to trying to beat it. With the altar First smashed, try. The deep you approach the Next, we had Plane of Night, which is a very interesting scenario in which dark is always infused and light is always taken away it can be difficult for some characters to deal with that it doesn't really affect our party here though in fact higher level mind thief will be able to use that dark so it didn't really affect us though because we weren't that higher level didn't really care for it at all this is a particular scenario which i think is fairly difficult at times and i think it is one of the more tricky ones or at least it's very tricky to underestimate this scenario the three deep terrors in the first room can take a little bit of your time up. And the second room with all those imps as well can just start piling on curses or piling on poison. And just it starts to add up and it becomes a real kind of slog. And you don't really realize that you've lost until it's too late on this particular scenario. It doesn't feel like it's very long, but that second room in particular can take quite a long time to clear. Uh, we failed it the first time because it came up just a little bit short of damage. Uh, when we got to the rock column to try and kill it there is a bug at the moment in digital where the health of the column is not actually being calculated correctly it's actually quite a bit less than it should be and we still failed the first time we tried it mainly just because of the imps they did us in they absolutely did us in and we ended up burning cards and just yeah spending way too long in that second room is very difficult Second attempt, though, we dealt with it much, much better. We had a little bit better RNG. We blitzed through the first two rooms and we quite comfortably defeated the rock column in the, on that attempt. I can get the tree, right? I just want to end it. Get the tree! The column, the tree! I just want to end it. I'm not going to take too much longer to get chests and things. Nice. Next was Drake's Nest. And this scenario I actually know pretty well because, again, I played it fairly recently on stream. 
I've got the strategy down for this particular one on Insane, so I found it very, very easy. I just went through it methodically again, just making sure that I played my cards, didn't make too many mistakes, didn't open myself up to too many attacks, just dealt with the enemies kind of quite handily. Crackheart had an absolutely amazing scenario on this one. Did so much damage because we just about got Rock Slide unlocked, I think, at this point in time. So Rock Slide was really starting to amp up our damage and positioning abilities to stop enemies from getting us or forcing enemies through traps. We had some, yeah, we, we really started to, to tick along with, with the crack heart at this point in time, and it showed. I mean, this one we dispatched really, really quickly. Very, very happy. I definitely think that you want to avoid that top room if you're going for a speed run. It's not worth opening it. It's too hard a room compared to the other rooms to kill the amount of drakes that you need. I also don't think that the item in there is enough to, of an incentive really to go for it. So... In my opinion, just stick to the side rooms, do the main room and the side rooms. Don't worry about that top room at the very top. Just ignore it, at least if you're going for a speed run. But if you are playing normally, then of course, you probably do want to open it up and try and get the uh, the chest in that room. Split. The waves of red scaled lizard. Ooh. Next, we have Doom Trench, and this is one where you just need to escape through the scenario. You don't even need to kill any enemies. You can just run all the way through. This one would be an incredibly easy one to speed run with the right characters and a little bit of invisibility just to help you out, to stop you from getting hit. We played this fairly honestly, though, I would say. I actually killed most of the enemies in the scenario and moved kind of just along. I didn't disregard them entirely. Lurkers are not that scary an enemy if you can move faster than them. Deep Terrors are obviously stationary, so as long as you can stay out of their range, then you should be okay too. There's a couple of Harrowers in this one, and they can be quite nasty at times, but also they do have cards that do absolutely nothing as well. I didn't play this really very well from a speedrun perspective. I certainly just took my time, killed some stuff, collected a bit of loot, and got out in a fairly average time. But you could probably finish this scenario in five minutes easily if you have enough movement i would think because again depending on what you're playing it doesn't matter what difficulty you're playing on the length of the scenario remains the same if you're playing on easy normal if you're playing on insane hard it doesn't matter the length of the scenario remains exactly the same so a strategy that's going to work on easy difficulty is going to work on insane difficulty pretty much except for the fact that you might have to burn some cards to damage because maybe you get hit for a little bit more but realistically on a scenario like this that ain't gonna matter Oh, just going to let us leave, chat. They're just going to let us leave. Good decision. Okay, so on to Slave Pens, which was probably my most hated scenario of the run. This scenario is just so annoying with your Orchid friend running off trying to open doors getting himself into trouble just ending his turn next to enemies it's just a real real pain to have to deal with and this one took me several attempts i think we ended up doing it maybe on the fourth attempt i think it was quite a lot we did have a couple of quick restarts though where we kind of very quickly figured out you know from the second room that ah this isn't gonna work out like i just had a feeling that this wasn't going to pan out and it's better to just restart now rather than, than wait until we play in another 15, 20 minutes and then we lose. Let's just you know, call it a day now and get and have another attempt. The room one, I think, is very easy to deal with. Room two, fairly easy to deal with. Room three really is the kicker for this because you get a elite stone golem, which is just like, got like shield three, got like 18 health or something crazy. Really difficult to deal with. Uh, can hit really really hard and although you can kind of kite them around quite a bit it, it can be a little bit difficult i did end up really having a lot of really good success with rock slide though in this scenario rock slide was mvp for me in this scenario just either blocking the orchid guy off to stop him from from running into trouble or actually just forcing some enemies through traps because i didn't actually have enough damage cards to play so forcing them to go through the traps so that the ally didn't go through the trap, so the orchid didn't just run through the trap and kill himself several times. That was so, so important in this one. And yeah, it was quite a frustrating one. Took us a few times to do it. But when we did it, it did feel really, really good to actually to actually finish this one. So really, really happy about that. 
this one, yeah. Um, this is going to be a run killer for a lot of people. I think this is one of those kind of scenarios where it, it could go south very, very quickly just because of what this guy does. It's something that's kind of out of your control. You have limited control over him, right? You can kind of, you know, put obstacles down or stand in the way or you know, do things to kind of block him up a little bit. But certainly if you're not playing the crack art, if you're playing two other characters, then he's going to run off a lot of the time. And that's going to be a bit of a problem. Opening doors way sooner than you want. Just not being able to control the scenario in an effective way. So, yeah, this one is going to be one of those kind of scenarios that I think a lot of people are going to get hung up on on increased difficulty. Because, yeah, it's just... Yeah, sometimes you get unlucky and you just have to kind of persevere on. Oh. Yeah, there we go. Red Thorn, you crazy fool. So after the terrible, terrible scenario that was slave pens we actually get to treacherous divide and this is where things started to get a lot easier for us we really found our rhythm here the worst scenarios were behind us so yeah we were definitely on the home stretch here and this is where we really tied things together and we made up a huge amount of time from this point onwards in fact i don't think we failed a single scenario from this point and we just went with it and uh, and it went really well so treacherous divide quite a long scenario in terms of having to deal with the enemies in the first room i had a lot of summons out of the cultist in this room a little bit unlucky but i did have unstable upheaval in my back pocket and so that doesn't really care how many enemies there are if you can get the right spot and i got an absolutely amazing spot to do an unstable upheaval in this game and we just, just destroyed the enemies very very quickly ran into the last room was surprised to find that there was only one frost demon in it and uh pretty much proceeded to just kill kill the uh, the altar very very quickly pieces of the shattered or split to the snowy floor the screeching you can look you may all right well that gained us some time for sure so for our first boss mission as the final run in to the end boss we have winged horror which is nightmare peak scenario this particular one was really just so so easy for the mind thief she just absolutely tore through everything in this scenario. At this point in time, we're quite high level. So our cards that we've got are really, really good. I actually ended up going Dig Pit on Krakar. And well, maybe I'm coming around a little bit on Dig Pit because I mean, it really, really worked a lot for us here. Just being able to go invisible on both characters just whenever we needed to with Into the Night on the Mind Thief and Dig Pit on the Krakar just meant that we could skip loads of enemy turns whenever we wanted to. We could take safe long rests whenever we needed to we felt like let's just long rest next turn and just go invisible long rest and there's no repercussions we didn't have to slow down our run to take a long rest to get our items back or to choose the cards that we want or heal so it was really really good and yeah dig pit maybe mvp <laughs> in some points in this game definitely they uh and dig pit did come into its own for sure but the Mind Thief just chewed through this enemy so quick. I think I had one egg spawn from the Winged Horror, but it was dead in three rounds. She just does so much damage at this point in time. With, you know, Dark Frenzy, with Brain Leech Bottom for the strength and effect as well. I was also quite often going to the Temple to get Blesses at this point in time because it just made sense to try and drive the Prosperity level up, maybe to hit two if I could. But also just because, well, I'm going against bosses. So it makes sense to try and get some times two draws, right? So we were just piling it all into that. And uh, yeah, she just melted this guy. It wasn't even really much of a, of a fight at all. I think we just did a really good job of just getting out of the way. Like opened the door, came back. Completely separated the boss from the rest of the room. This is like textbook like this is exactly what you want to try and do to beat a boss like i i honestly don't think i could have done it any better the next boss is the sightless eye which is the layer of the unseeing eye scenario this boss was even quicker than the winged horror to down just really just did not pose a threat at all at this point in time the mind thief just wrecked them and then to be honest the scenario is quite short as well it's only two rooms the first room just with a bunch of lurkers was very easy to navigate quite safely because of the terrain that was there it was quite easy to just position them how i wanted them to and, and kill them quite quickly and then with the amount of just you know, 
burn damage that I have as well on the crack heart at this point in time. I can just do a big unstable upheaval to just clear the room of any of the, uh, the additional enemies that were in that room too. So the Harrower and the two deep terrors was not a problem. We just completely destroyed them. It was not even uh, not even close. So in terms of speeding both of these scenarios up, so the previous scenario and this one, definitely just go straight to the boss room and just try and kill the boss. Like just ignore most of the enemies because I felt like I could kill the bosses just in three turns. So it really did not take very long at all, uh, which is interesting, really. I would have thought that they would have posed more of a problem. And I, I think maybe this is a little bit of an indicator for boss missions in Gloomhaven. I don't think that they're often as, as challenging as maybe they first appear because really you can just hit enemies you know, for a lot of damage if you just focus all of your efforts on doing that. So yeah, another very easy scenario and we were making really good time at this point. And uh, yeah, we were we were rolling at this point in time and I was, I was gunning for the end at, at this point in time. So on to the penultimate boss of the campaign, which is the Dark Rider boss in the Shadow Weld mission. This particular guy is pretty hard to deal with at times because he does spawn onto the board and then if he manages to hit you then he will actually disappear until the following round and then he'll come onto the board maybe do an attack action again and then he might disappear again but if he doesn't manage to actually do any damage to you then he won't leave the board and really this is again another reason why invisibility is just incredibly strong because you just go invisible he can't attack anything so therefore he doesn't disappear and then it just became very easy for us to just play very early initiatives against him to attack then potentially um go invisible then do a late initiative the following round and then attack him again just became quite easy really to control this guy i also made sure that in the first turn of the game i moved to the last summon location that this guy goes to so he goes to a different location each round in a clockwise. It's not actually quite clockwise. It's actually a bit of a crisscrossy pattern. It's, it's a bit different. So I went to the last space that he will spawn and it would have been like round four if he was going to spawn there just so that I had a lot of time and potentially his movement wouldn't be able to reach me within the first round or, or so. He did actually manage to go really early on the first round and actually come in, hit me and disappear, which was a little bit disappointing. But from round two onwards, I actually managed to keep him on the board entirely and just whittled him down incredibly quickly. So again, just another kind of a little bit underwhelming to, to kill bosses this quickly. But in terms of speed running times, this is a very good time, I would say, for this boss. I was very happy with the way that we dealt with it. And uh, yeah, invisibility. It's, uh, it's very, very good when you're trying to do speed runs. Wow. All right. So this really brings us to the final mission, the final scenario in the entire speed run. So this guy is, well, potentially really, really painful. He can definitely uh, hit you for a ridiculous amount. I think it's like attack 18s. It's just absolutely insane like he can basically wipe out your health uh with one attack so you have to be very very careful when facing this guy and surprise surprise invisibility was incredibly effective here at stopping him from being able to attack and then positioning ourselves it went really well the crack heart sort of ended up being a little bit of a, as a distraction in this scenario for us so i just let the crack heart soak up any of the attacks on the weird turns where we couldn't be invisible so he was quite often stunned so you just have a stun that this guy plays a wound that this guy plays a fairly decent attack the crack heart just basically ate all of the damage so it didn't have to do too much uh, and the mind thief just whittled him down over time using the invisibility using all of those extra attacks that she gets making sure to use those elements that she can create them and use them and just yeah dark frenzy uh, brain leech bottom just essentially hit them for, for a huge amount of damage all the time i did it first time i was pretty much expecting to do it first time because i knew that what i needed to do was just play my cards in the correct order and i shouldn't really lose um it's just a matter of time so yeah a little bit of an anticlimactic fight really i i guess um if you are going down this route um but for speed running terms it, it is it's a very simple scenario to do really very simple boss to defeat as are all of the bosses really that you definitely in this uh speed run or the game in general 
I would say. You definitely um, have it the most hardest at the beginning of, of the run. There are a lot of things that can go wrong, you know, bad RNG you can get out of cultists and things like that. And as you gradually progress through and after you finish that slave pens mission, I think it's all downhill really from here. You you should be able to uh, to really rattle through the final final missions. You got it. Wow. For the good times. Ah. Get the move. Get it. Swords fall to the stone floor with a sharp ring. The ace there stands limp, a look of shock on his wounded <laughs> face. Yeah, boy. A little bit spicy. How dare you? We did it. We did it. 14 hours, 11 minutes. I'm surprised that we did it that quick. Like, I wanted to go sub 20, and we went way sub 20 by a lot. And uh, I think those last scenarios were just really easy. Once you get through um, slave pens and you get through... Um, what was the other one we really struggled with quite early on? We were actually running behind at some certain points. Like, if you have a look at where we were in the times, like, Black Barrow actually took us a solid hour. But then look at this. Like, towards the end, it was just like... Bang, bang, bang. So easy. Okay then, there you have it. I just wanted to do a recap on the uh, on the charity event and the 24-hour stream and the speed run. Really, I did really enjoy doing this, and I think I will probably do it again. Maybe not soon. I think I need some time to like rest and and think about it a little bit more. I'm a little bit Gloomhaven out uh, immediately after it. I was just like I've just been playing Gloomhaven constantly for so long now that I really needed to take a little bit of a break. I'm also kind of interested in maybe doing some speedruns on easy because. There is now a uh, there is now a section on speedrun.com for Gloomhaven. I encourage people to go and have a look. Maybe have a go at your go yourself. You know, it's a it's an interesting game to try and speedrun. There's a lot of RNG in it. You can definitely get good runs and bad runs that may be in or out of your control. But that kind of makes it interesting as a casual speedrunner. I mean, our time was not anything really to write home about. But I'm really glad that we did it. And again, I just want to say thank you to everybody who donated to the charity live stream over the course of it and everyone who stopped by and watched. It was really an incredible stream. All right. Well, then, you know the drill. I guess it's time for me to ask if you would like the video and subscribe. Also, come and hang over at twitch.tv slash mandatory request if you want to catch me live playing Gloomhaven. I'll be live every Monday, Wednesday and Sunday. So come hang out, play some Gloomhaven. Uh, also, consider joining the community Discord. I'll put a link down in the description as well. If you'd like to try and find other people to play Gloomhaven with or if you've got any rules questions, there's lots of people very knowledgeable about Gloomhaven in the Discord. Okay then, well, apart from that, it's all that's left for me to say is thank you again so much for watching. I will catch you in the next one. Bye. Uh, I think so. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Scout oh the wins. Blitz. That's the blitz <laughs> from the <Jeff. laughs> <laughs> That's the blessing so, from... Uh, uh, Isaac, at this point, can we uh, get your approval to add an additional attack modifier deck uh, for allies in the digital... <laughs>